to see if we could identify what sort of weapon was used. So with the assistance of Warwick University, they will create a 3D model for us and manage to look at this injury in minute detail so that if we do recover a weapon, that we can compare the weapon with the injury. A specimen of bone from the victim's shoulder has been carefully transported to Warwick University. Where a more detailed analysis of the wound will be carried out using groundbreaking scanning technology. Our expertise is in 3D scanning and visualization. It's a science of, science of measurement or characterization. So we take a physical object and we use scanning technology to create a virtual or digital copy of that object. Should we spin it around, see if you can see that yeah. cut mark that we saw? Because the experts are using an X-ray to scan the specimen, they won't come into direct contact with the evidence, therefore preventing any cross-contamination. We scan the uh, specimen and we'll be able to effectively zoom into the wound on the bone and actually take measurements, which gives us a really good indication as of the levels of force, the type of weapon that was used, and also help visualise the ferocity and the, the nature of the attack. The imprint made by the knife wound will provide vital information about the shape of the blade used. Simplest way, I think, to, to quantify the actual level of detail that we see, we can view these these forensic specimens. If you imagine a, a television to, uh, and you're looking at pixels, now your pixel on a television set which would, would match a hospital scanner would be roughly half a millimetre or 0.6 of a millimetre in diameter. The pixels in our scanners can go down to nanometers. So nan a nanometer is a, is a millionth is a millionth of a millimetre. OK, so we'll, we'll do, do a scan yeah. and uh, we'll uh, take a look at the results. Yeah, definitely. What you're looking at here is, is actually the full sample. And what you see here is we've captured all the packet, the packaging, the soft tissue, the bone. Everything is captured in within that within that container. What you see here, this is the soft tissue. Good bug. Watch now. You'll see it being stripped away. And now we're left with that very clear bone, which is where the imprint of the knife. A very distinct, sharp, straight edge with a point. With a point at the end, yeah. Interesting. As looking at look at the different views, as you can see how it's penetrated quite deeply into the trabecular, which is a very hard, dense material on the, yeah. the outside of your bone. Yeah. This plan view here, this is the, the width of the bone from the top, so you can right. see that it's gone straight through. So the level of force required would be significant. Would we know what type of knife? This shape is sharp, V-shaped, yeah. and so that would be characteristic of a sharp-edged weapon, such as a combat knife or even a carving knife. And this image, you can clearly see that very distinctive, sharp, Edge. Obviously, the, 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 wound, the blade would have penetrated through this, the edge. If it was a serrated weapon, it would produce a different shape. It would be more of a U-shaped or more of a square, much a wider um, shape. This would support our witness. We've got one key witness who sees everything, gives an account of what happened. He describes the victim being attacked by three people. It appears to be a, um, a sustained attack. Um, we know from other injuries uh, that he's got that they're at the front, they're from the back. And it, it just adds another layer of support to what that key witness says.